Hi, let's do a color blend today. Okay, I'm done goofing around. We're gonna be working on a color blend today. Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new, if you're not new, welcome, we're a family, and thanks for joining us today. So um, I'm gonna be doing a color blend today, and I haven't done this in a minute, and somebody actually requested this, so whoever you are, shout out to you, because I thought of you, because I have a color blend appointment tomorrow, so I thought I'll show you. And this is another variation of a ginger blend. I had one that I did previously, and I'm gonna tag the video up here somewhere just so you can go check that out. However, this is gonna be a different variation because I did it on my client last week, and it turned out bellissimo. I think that's what that means. <laughs> it turned out beautiful, so I thought I'll share that today and what colors I'm using in a little bit of water. The two colors I'll be using are color 30 and color 350. So as you can tell, color 30 is what I feel like people would describe as like, uh, if you'll focus, a classic ginger shade basically. However, it lacks dimension. And I feel like for most gingers that I've seen, the other one that I talked about, that's a whole different video. Anyway, back to this one. <laughs> like I said, this is a classic ginger shade. By all means, you can go in with the straight 30. However, for me, it lacks dimension. There's no dimension to it. It's very flat. And most ginger colors that I've seen when people dye their actual hair, they have a bit of a tint to it, which is more of like a reddish tint, and that's where the color 350 comes from. Again, this is this could potentially be a ginger-ish color too, although I do feel like on its own it's a bit it's a tad bit too red for me, but it's not like a true or like a blue red it's almost like an orangey red which is why this is important and that's why i use color 350 instead of a color like burgundy or beachy which has more of a blue undertone so yeah that's why i use these two colors and with these two combined it gives me the perfect well aside from my aside from my other ginger blend it gives me a different version of perfect of a ginger blend so yeah that's what i'm going to be mixing around today and the end result looks phenomenal like i said the 30 is that perfect ginger color but that 350 just comes in and just warms it up and it just livens it up if you do want to do my other ginger blend i do throw on color 27 just for a bit of a highlight in there for a bit like a more of a yeah i throw on the 27 for a highlight while the 350 is almost a low light however with these two i just feel like these two balance each other out especially since my client's hair that i'm going to be doing tomorrow her hair color is a mix between these two. So yeah, let's jump right in. Okay, so now I hope you can see those streaks of 350 and 30 that I'm talking about. It's not chunky streaks because I don't want that because I did blend this like till my arms almost fell off. But um, you still see those streaks, but even the streak of 350, it's not that big. I want it to be so seamless that it almost looks like one color. And for comparison, this is, looks, this is what it looks like next to color 30. This is color 30 right here. And then, yeah, this is color 30 right here. And this is the blended color. And then this is the color 350. And then the color 30, the 30 with the, the blend. Here we go. <laughs> so that's what it looks like next to each other. And as you can tell, it's a perfect mixture of both. It has that 30, which like I said, is that nice ginger color. But that 350 just comes in there and just warms it up to give it that like red richness to it. But not that blue undertone like I talked about earlier, but that more so orange undertone because 30 is pretty much like an orangey color. So yeah, I hope that makes sense and clarifies why I blend and kind of explain a little bit about why, how I blend and how I pick my colors and stuff like that. Um, let's get to blending. 30, 350, I take about equal parts of both and I lay them on top of each other like this and I get to blending. Again, split down the middle, layer, split, layer, split, layer, and you kind of sort of get the gist at this point. And also, I think I shared this tip a while ago, but if this is your first time, I don't get pre-stretched hair because by the time I'm mixing this, because I blend it so much, it stretches out by itself at the end. So that's a plus right there. But um, yeah, I just continue to split and blend. And that's what I'm going to keep doing until I get the desired color. And if I ever feel like I need to add a bit of 350, a bit of 30, then by all means I do it. I try not to do too much of a section bigger than this. This is what I'm doing. This is about about a little more than half a pack just because it gets a lot in your hand <laughs> and mixing that color. Actually, this is about a pack. Oh, sorry, this is about a pack. 
but yeah i try not to do anything more than that because then it's just way too much hair in your hand the hair starts to get tangled it's just a hot mess and as i'm going i try not to like tune out myself too much and just split and layer because sometimes I might just be doing the same section over and over. So why I layer it? So like this is a big fat chunk of 350. I know, okay, this is where you should split and layer. Again, going in for that color, split and layer. So make sure you're not just like aimlessly putting it on top of each other, but actually like splitting the colors, whether that be 30, whether that be 350, that's on top. Make sure that you're actually splitting the colors. Okay, so the color is starting to come together now. This is a bit of a chunkier version. If you want that, by all means, you can stop here. However, I like mine to be super blended, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, now I'm just brushing through the hair. And as you can tell, like I said, it's already tapering out by itself. However, an indication for me that I know if I blend it properly is if I still have chunks of hair that are still like blunt at the end, that means I have not blended it properly. Because if I did, then there wouldn't be any chunks. So you might still see some blunt ends right there. So I know my job is not done. Like I said, by all means, if you wanna stop right here, this looks good already, but I'm not stopping so <laughs> I'm gonna keep brushing and blend until like it's all blended in all the ends are pretty much tapered and none of them are still blunt at the ends I like it's actually not equal parts it's a little more 350 that's pretty much what it looks like all blended out this is actually a beautiful color of equal parts if you want to try this out send it to me tag me I'll love to see the results but you get my gist let's braid now for the tutorial. Now I'm just braiding away my pre-parting section. I did switch up my technique previously to what I have up on my channel and I will find some time to record this but um yeah let's actually get into the braiding today. So I just started with the back and I followed the simple technique. I split my hair into three after adding some product and I always add my hair in from the right side in between my thumb finger and my index finger as you can see right there i was trying to remember my fingers but um yeah i just added in between those three fingers and since she has regular hair i add three strands and i start to braid down and then if i later on i might go in and add just one more strand of hair just for a little bit of thickness if it's not thick as i want however with the nape i try not to make it so so heavy because that place is like more tender and people just have thinner hair back there so i don't want the braid to weigh it down so so much but um yeah, that's pretty much it. And I left the beginning process in regular speed just so you can see how much I how I take my time because building the base for your knots is so, so key. So I always left that in regular speed for you just so you can see how I'm taking my time to build a solid foundation so my braid doesn't puckle or it's bulky. It's just the right size, but yeah. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to kind of just leave you guys kind of vibe out to some tunes because I do have a few... Just anyway, I'm gonna leave you guys to just vibe to some tunes, and this is pretty much the tutorial. And I'm gonna jump right in later on to share a few more tips, but yeah.
Okay, this part I left in just so we can talk about the struggles of braiding during COVID. I started this braid, I was like, get in a solid base. I looked at it, I was like, something's off. I braided her hair in the mask, so I had to take it down and make sure I had her hair out. If you're a hairstylist, you probably struggle with this. I had a client, we were about to take photos at the end. I'm like, hey, can you just take down your mask really quick? And I'm like, it's not coming down because I had braided down her hair. So that was really bad. But um, yeah, I just wanted to share that little clip right there. Again, just making sure that I leave this in regular speed for you, splitting my hair down to three. I do a little first plait, and then I go in and I start adding my hair in. If you do have fine hair, I do have a tutorial on my channel where I explain the technique a little bit differently. But she does have thick hair, so I follow just the regular method of knotless braids. But like I said, if you have thin hair, make sure you go check out my other video. I'm going to tag it up here somewhere just so you can have the same results. But with a technique that works better with your hair, and like I, you can see me here, just make sure you get all... All the flyaways and i'm making sure that i'm tucking her hair for longevity and also just so the blend that we did you actually see it on top and not her actual hair color Looks like i'm fighting with her hair right here but i promise you i'm not i'm just trying to make sure that i tuck her hair properly so you're gonna see me constantly pulling the braid in hair towards the front and setting her actual hair to the back sometimes i use a little bit of jam just so like i said i tuck for longevity so her hair lasts long and also so the beautiful color that you mix is actually shown on top of the braids that's why i tuck and that's why i fight with the hair as much as possible wrapping up the last braid here again i'm gonna leave it in normal speed just so you can see what i'm doing and i've been trying to truly get better angles for you guys because like i've been really trying my best because it's hard sometimes to film with the camera and the lights and everything and make sure that i'm literally not having the lights on my client's head but also like blocking her but i'm gonna try to do better as i go forward with the future videos but this is pretty much it i'm gonna add some pictures and videos here at the end and if you want to check out more make sure you go check out my instagram and make sure you follow me there as well but this is it for today's video and i hope you all have a great and blessed day